Welcome to Advancing Learning Through Evidence-Based STEM Teaching, an open online course for current and future STEM faculty. I'm Trina McMahon. I'm a professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in Civil and Environmental Engineering. I teach several courses at UW-Madison. Uh, I teach an introduction, introduction to Engineering course for freshmen, uh, a, an Introduction to Environmental Engineering for sophomore and juniors, <clears throat> that, which is a required course in my discipline. I also teach honors biology and a course in environmental microbiology, as well as courses on, about teaching and learning uh, on my campus for future faculty. And I'm Derek Bruff. I'm the director of the Center for Teaching at Vanderbilt University. I'm also a senior lecturer in mathematics, where I teach courses in statistics and linear algebra, and a really fun course in cryptography I get to teach from time to time. At the Center for Teaching, my colleagues and I work with faculty and graduate students all over campus uh, to help them develop foundational teaching skills, but also um, explore new ideas in teaching and learning. This course is a uh, sequel of sorts to an, another course that we put together called An Introduction to Evidence-Based Undergraduate STEM Teaching. That course was something of a kind of STEM teaching 101, um, looking uh, specifically at uh, evidence-based teaching practices, uh, teaching practices that are supported by research um, in various ways. Um, this course, uh, like that other one, will focus on STEM teaching, so that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, um, and undergraduate teaching. Certainly some of the ideas and strategies that we discuss in this course will have application to other types of teaching, K-12, high school, graduate teaching, but we'll be thinking primarily of the undergraduate context. I should also add that although this is a sequel to another course, you don't actually have to have finished the first course to get something out of this course. In this course, we'll be exploring more evidence-based teaching practices, and we're going to help you learn how to collect, analyze, and act upon your own evidence. So the, this approach is actually, uh, we have a special term for it, um, and this approach to one's teaching is called teaching as research, and I just call it TAR sometimes, the acronym. And the goal of this course is to prepare you to conduct your own TAR project. So um, this notion of teaching as research is something that I encountered uh, several years ago. Um, one of my first encounters was an article by Randy Bass of Georgetown University. Uh, he wrote this really nice article called What's the Problem? And he said that in our research, having a problem is a good thing, right? <laughs> it means you've got something to study, something to investigate. But in our teaching, we often think of the problem as a bad thing, right? Something to be fixed or resolved or gotten rid of. But if you change your lens a little bit um, and think about teaching problems, I found for me this was really helpful. It gave me a way of thinking about my teaching similar to how I'm trained as a mathematician, um, looking for interesting questions, interesting problems to investigate. In this case, not mathematical questions or problems, but questions about student learning. That's interesting that you focus on the problem, Derek, because as an engineer, I'm trained to solve problems. So I get excited about a challenging problem, but then I'm also excited about finding that solution. And so a lot of what we're going to be talking about is um, trying to help you design something like a TAR project in order to, to solve the problem in your course so you can move on to finding more exciting ones. My own experience with the Teaching as Research project uh, came while I was a second year assistant professor at UW-Madison. I actually took a course on teaching and learning while I was there. Uh, and I went into that course convinced that my students were having a specific problem with graphical representation of the solution to the problems that they were working on in class. Um, so for example, graphing uh, an equation that describes the solution to a particular engineering problem. Um, and I was convinced that it was the graphical representation that was the conceptual problem. But when I went into uh, this, this course that I was taking to analyze my own course, um, I gathered data from my students about um, what problem, what challenges they were facing in trying to solve the problems that I was giving them. And I found that they were actually stumbling at a very different point in the problem solving mm -hmm. process. So they were actually having a lot of trouble unpacking a word problem. So if there's a paragraph description of, of something that I want them to, to analyze, they couldn't turn that into a system of equations, which then they would solve and graph the results of. So I was, um, I had first witnessed them unable to make the graph, but really the problem was being able to, to tackle a word problem. Um, and it was really eye-opening for me to realize this because I, I realized that I would have spent a lot of time and, and probably wasted energy trying to address something that wasn't really the problem. And it was the teaching as research framework that illuminated that for me. Uh, and so that was really exciting for me when I first learned about yeah. it. 
And I think that's one of the strengths of teaching as research as a framework is that um, you don't have to think of your students as these kind of black boxes where you don't really understand kind of how they're thinking or what they're thinking or what they understand or what they don't, um, but you can actually uh, collect and analyze evidence of student learning that can shed light on uh, their thought processes and what they're struggling with and what their challenges are. Um, and then that can inform what you do as a teacher to teach more effectively. In this course, we're going to start with an introduction to teaching as research um, to try to help you understand a little more thoroughly what this idea is and what it looks like and why you might be engaged in it. Then we'll have a series of modules exploring various teaching strategies and the evidence that support them. Uh, teaching strategies like uh, cooperative learning, problem-based learning, peer instruction. Um, we'll spend a week looking at learning through diversity. Then at the end of the course, we're going to return to the teaching as research framework um, to consider problems that you might investigate in your own teaching, um, drawing on ideas and strategies um, from the rest of the course. Your final assignment in this course is to design a teaching as research project. You don't have to implement it, um, but we do want to help prepare you to design one of these, and that'll be a peer graded assessment, so you'll get some feedback from your peers on your project design. So by now you're probably wondering who's putting this course together. The team really is a group of staff and faculty within the CERTL network. And CERTL stands for the Center, center for the Integration of Research, Teaching, and Learning. And it's a distributed center in the sense that it's comprised of more than 20 institutions of higher learning in the United States. Uh, each of those institutions has faculty and staff at them whose mission is to prepare future faculty. Uh, so we're going to be drawing on the expertise of the CERTL network along with expertise from outside the network in order to put this course together for you. So teaching as research is one of CERTL's core ideas, and we're going to be exploring that in great detail in this course. But CERTL also has two other core ideas that inform its work, which we'll be touching on as we go along. The first is learning communities. Now, you're going to be forming a learning, learning community uh, as participants in this course, but your students also form a learning community in your class and can support each other and uh, um, engage in peer-to-peer um, -peer instruction and other kinds of interactions that would create a special learning community for them. So we're going to be talking quite a bit about that as well. The, other, the third core idea from uh, CERTL is learning through diversity. And the concept here is that we draw upon the experiences, backgrounds, and skills brought by our students to our classrooms in order to make that uh, learning experience richer for everyone. And so we're going to see these two core ideas, the learning communities and learning through diversity, throughout the course, along with the teaching as research core idea. Speaking of learning communities, um, certainly in this course you'll have plenty of opportunities to interact with the course content, right? We've got videos for you to watch with embedded questions to help you kind of pause and think about different aspects of the content. Um, we'll have weekly quizzes to help you make sense of things. But we also want to see this course as a learning community. And so we've got some structures to help you learn from and with each other as well. So primarily that's the discussion forums. Um, the forums are a great place to share your personal experiences, to ask questions about course content, um, to connect with other folks who are interested in learning about teaching as research, um, exploring ways this looks different in different disciplines. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to um, uh, kind of network with other learners um, and learn from them. We'll have some structured opportunities as well through the peer graded assignments like that final project. Um, and so um, we encourage you to jump in and, and see this course as an opportunity not only to kind of learn from us putting the course together, but to learn from your peers as well. Uh, one way you can do that is to form a local learning community. Uh, so uh, we encourage you to seek out colleagues, either at your campus or in your region, um, who you can meet with and interact with as you work your way through this course. Um, it's a great opportunity, if you can do it face to face, even better, um, to uh, kind of take what you're learning in this course and go deeper with it, um, help each other kind of apply it to your own teaching and potential teaching. And so um, we think it's a, a nice kind of complement to what you're doing online in this course. And if you're interested in facilitating a local learning community, please let us know. We've got some additional resources that you can use to help make those face to face meetings a little richer. We're really looking forward to getting to know you and participating in that learning community, so jump right in and have a good time. Mm -hmm.